Good morning. Thank you for joining us here at Unity San Diego this beautiful morning. And whether it's morning, noon, or night, we hope that you are having a blessed day. Today, our message is above the line. And thank you so much for joining us.
day with a little bit of love. to start the day. Hmm. I'm awake now. Good morning and welcome to Unity San Diego on this beautiful March 21st already of 2021. The year is going by quickly. My name is Reverend Carla Leitner. I'm the associate minister here at Unity San Diego. We'd like to welcome all of you for joining me this morning. We'd like to begin in prayer. So if you just take a moment to just breathe just knowing that as we start our joy, our day in joy, in love, in peace, we have a choice. We have a choice to start our day with positivity, with the blessings of love. We have a choice to live a fabulous life, have a fabulous Sunday. We have a choice to live from our divinity. We have a choice, and we are happy that you have chosen to be here with us today. And we are here to be spiritually fed. And we say thank you. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Well, I'd love for you to say our church prayer our, on the screen with me, please. Say that together with me, please. Guided by infinite wisdom and prospered by divine love, we move forward in unity to realize our spiritual potential. Now we have our vision statement, and our vision statement is really big. It's a worldwide statement. And 
It's a big, big vision. But as each of us take that in and repeat this vision and really live it and believe it, we can really transform. So if you'd say this with me, please. A world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awakening. And now here comes our, vision, our mission statement. We've pulled that vision statement in a little bit. Here is how we are living that here at Unity San Diego. Please say this with me. Empowering personal growth through positive spiritual principles, inspirational music, and community service. And now here's some inspirational music as our music team sings God Chant by Jennifer Farron and Rosemary Mallinson. God is the source of all I see. God is the source of all I see. God is the source in me. God is the source in me. God is the light in which I'm seeing. God is the light in which I'm seeing. God is the light in me. God is the light in me. God is the love that I am feeling. God is the love that I am feeling. God is the love in me. God is the love in me. God is the source and God is the light. God is the source and God is the light. God is the love in me. God is the love in me. our time to give a greeting, place a greeting in the chat, chat box. So if you'll say with me, namaste, the divinity in me honors the divinity in you. Let's say that together. Namaste, the divinity in me honors the divinity in you. Namaste, the divinity in me honors the divinity in you. Ah, oh, that felt good. So we're so grateful that you're viewing us today, that you've come to watch us this morning. And we have some announcements for you. Now, Unity was founded on healing, and our LUT in going to be LUT that is working on becoming a licensed Unity teacher very soon, a coastal Washington Woods, is teaching Myrtle Fillmore's Healing Letters class, a wonderful inspirational class. It's Monday mornings from 11 to a.m. to 1 p.m. And it will go on through the end of this month, through March 29th. If you'd like to join the class, just email monica at unitysandiego 
at gmail.com for the link. Reverend Edith is still teaching her book, More Together Than Alone, by uh, world-famed author, New York author, Mark Nepo. It's a wonderful book that it has been really monumental for many people that have joined her book study. That's on Mondays from 6.30 to 8, Pacific Standard Time on Zoom. On Zoom. You can also email Monica at unitysandiego.com for that link. And the Spiritual Recovery Group is the class that I teach with four agreements. Some Thursday nights, Pacific Standard Time, on Zoom. We are now on agreement three, don't make assumptions. So if you are in recovery from making assumptions, if you need to not assume, we've actually done charts of how many times we assume during the week and don't even think about it, then please join us Thursday at 7 p.m. You can contact me, Rev Carla Leitner, at gmail.com, or my phone number is on the screen for the Zoom link. We have a really great crowd of people that are working on these deep agreements. And also, please don't forget today our fellowship, our Zoom fellowship, right after service. And the meeting ID and password will be in the chat bar. Now I invite you to relax and listen to our meditation hymn, God Before Me, by Richard Burdick. This is our time of meditation. I invite you to, wherever you are, get comfortable, relax, knowing that wherever you are, when we come together in a time of meditation, that we are in a sacred space. Take with me, friends, a deep, holy breath. As you exhale, let go of anything that you're holding, holding in your hands, in your laps, in your consciousness. Throw away those to-do lists, those concerns of how you'll spend the rest of the weekend. And open your hearts as you allow the words of spirit to silently become the words of your heart. I am a divine being. I am connected, connected within, as the spirit of divinity resides within me. I accept that I am the embodiment of spirit. I am the embodiment of the God of my understanding. The power of God is unlimited. Nothing, nothing can stop the forever unfolding and the expression of God working in, as, and through me. 
in my own individual way. I am guided and I am. I am that which expresses through me as I release and let go and allow spirit to work through me. I take the time of thinking and knowing that there are endless possibilities if I just relax, let go, and listen for that sound, that sound of God in the silence. I am open. I am receptive. I listen for that voice and I know what is mine to do. I accept that God-given ideas, ideas are working through me now. And I know that every idea is expressed completely and through me I I'm God in expression. And I say thank you. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. I invite you, friends, to bring your awareness back to the present. Open your eyes as you feel ready. And as you move through your week, Remember that the power and presence of God within blesses us each and every day. All we need to do is breathe, go within, and ask. Namaste. Now we have the Lord's Prayer. in heaven who art in heaven hallowed be thy name hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy kingdom come thy will be done thy will be done on earth as it Forgive as we forgive those who 
those who harm us, those who harm us. and let us not. The song I'm going to sing is called Temporary. It's by the words and music by John Bucchino. And I have sung his song, Grateful. It's one of my very favorites. And this has not taken its place as my favorite, but it's right up there. It's a, just a beautiful song, beautiful lyrics. And it's speaking about the temporariness of the world that we live in. We'll call it below the line today. Temporary. Honey, come here. I have something to tell you. It won't make things perfect, and it may not make sense, but someday you'll see it as clear as my smile. Tear stain. Cry. 
that was beautiful. I got to take a moment. That's a, that was beautiful. I guess sometimes it's good that some things are temporary, right? Ooh, give me a minute. I just have to honor my little brother who uh, today was his birthday. He would have been 59 years today. So that really touched me. So, <sighs> okay. Well, some things, though, it's good that they're temporary, right? Have you ever felt that pit, that feeling in the pit of your stomach? It's not that feeling like when you're hungry and you haven't eaten lunch. But it's a deep gnawing feeling, a hunger that just can't be filled. Have you ever felt that? Some people attempt to fill this hole with alcohol, with drugs, with addictive behaviors, being a workaholic, maybe gambling addicts. I know in the past some of those behaviors were mine because I couldn't fill this hole. But as I got some more spiritual understanding, I realized that that hole was my God hole, that I called it. Deep within it was my divinity, giving me a subtle reminder, and sometimes, a lot of times, much more than a subtle reminder, that it was within me. But how did it get there? There's a Hindu story that tells about it. See the Hindu gods on the screen right now. It talks about the divinity of mankind. It's a Hindu legend, and according to this legend, there was a time when all humans were gods. But they abused their divinity so badly that Brahma, the guy with all the heads up there, the chief god, decided to take their divinity away and put it in a place where they could never find it. But he really couldn't think of where to put it. So he got together a council of the gods and he said, give me some suggestions. Well, yeah, I need to know where to put this divinity. I'm, I'm having a little brain freeze here. So the god said, well, let's bury it deep in the earth. But Brahma said, nope, that's not going to do. The humans will dig in the earth and they'll find it. The god said, okay, then let's, let's sink it in the ocean, way deep. They'll never find it there. Brahma said, nope, they'll learn to die. And then they'll find it there too. And then they said, what about the highest mountain? Over to the farthest corner of the earth. But again, Brahma said, you know what, that's not going to do because eventually they're going to climb every mountain, they're going to scale every peak, and every hidden cave they're going to they're going to find, and they'll find it. The rest of the gods, were, they were just exasperated. They're like, well we, well, we can't think of anything else. What should we do? I don't know. There is no place. The humans are going to find it no matter where we put it. Brahma decided to do a little prayer and meditation. He thought about it long, and he thought about it deeply. Finally, he said, I got it. I know what we should do with this divinity. We'll hide it deep within them. Deep within each and every human, we'll hide the divinity. Surely nobody's going to look there. They'll never find it. And the rest of the gods said, of course, of course, it's the perfect place. And they agreed, and it was done. And so ages has passed since this Hindu story, and humans have been climbing every mountain, searching high and low, looking for something that they lost, not really sure what it is they lost, but that feeling, that God hole, they just can't seem to find it until they learn to look within for their happiness, their divinity, and God. You know, when you think about it, that story's pretty deep. Have you ever looked outside of yourself for happiness, for God, for love? Where have you searched to find fulfillment? I know sp I spent a lot of years looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for somebody or something to complete me, to make me happy. I spent years never even having a remote idea that the key to everything was within myself. Have you experienced that? Many people have, because do you know that the Bible actually agrees with the Hindu, sto Hindu story? It's much shorter, and it's not a huge story like that, but Luke 17, 21 says, they can't say here it is or there it is. You see, the kingdom of God is within you. 
You know, it's really amazing that their directions or the map to divinity has been right in front of us, right? Yet sometimes it seems like it's really too simple. Like, after all, it's divinity, right? Shouldn't we be hanging from the chandeliers like Laura Croft in, like, in the Tomb Raider or going through snakes in, uh, in Raiders of the Lost Ark? Shouldn't we be, like, digging and finding, like, on the History Channel? Or maybe we can search for the money pit like they do on Oak Island. It seems like it should be a huge, big deal. It's our divinity. But you know what? It's right here. It's right here in front of us, the only place we don't look. And Jesus taught that. And so when we follow Jesus, as we do in unity as our way shower, we realize that it's not as hard as it looks. And it's really pretty simple. But let's take a moment to look a little bit deeper at our divinity. Now, if it's really here, then where is it? And how does it express? To do this, we look at the threefold nature of mankind. You're going to use three candles to talk about the threefold nature of humankind, which is body, mind, and spirit. So, our body is a vehicle that houses our mind and spirit. We know that it is temporary, it's a temporary part of us. It changes from the minute we're born, changes throughout life. It continues to change, and it eventually does die. The second is our mind or soul, and it's the part of us that carries our feelings from this life and past lives, if we believe that. It carries that with us through lifetimes. It's the lens for which our spirit looks and views the world that we live in. It changes and it grows because we can change our mind, right? We can change our mind. We can change our opinion. So it changes, but it's eternal. Can you imagine how much is stored in here of all these experiences that we've had? And last is our spirit. Our spirit is our everlasting connection with the God of our understanding. It's with us no matter where we are. It's always here. And we can always access it with a simple breath. And that time to go within in the silence. It's everlasting, it never changes, and it never dies. So that's the threefold nature of humankind. Body, mind, and spirit. But you know, what does that have to do with living above the line? Well, having a line lets us know where we are in what aspect of our three-part existence that we're living in at any given time. So the line that I've created today, it's a spiritual line. I thought about it because Ron asked me, like, what is the line? And I'm like, you know, the line, right? The line. And I was thinking of my daughter in the morning in her school, where every morning the principal talks about, do your best, you know, work above the line. Don't work below the line. But that's not what I meant. And so when I went into the silence and really thought about the line, I realized that what I'm talking about is spirit, the eternal, changeless, and timeless parts of us, and then the temporary, changing, time parts that is our body, and then the middle, which is our mind and soul, which many of us are on quite a bit of the time. You see, we can, when we live below the line, our thinking is temporary. It's based on time. It's based on lack, on limitation. Sometimes I'm worry and fear. I got to get this done. I don't have any time. I got to get this done like right now. But when we think with our spiritual eyes, when we see with that, when we live above the line, we're thinking eternally. We're changeless. It's timeless. And when we're on that line, actually on the line, we get to view. We get to stand in the middle and view each situation. Do I want to view this with my human eyes? Do I want to view this with my spiritual eyes? And what can I do to best serve my highest good? Because that's a clue where we are. That's our awareness is a clue of where we are on our individual spiritual journeys. I always like this saying that helps me remember. I'm a spiritual being having a human experience living in a spiritual universe that's governed by spiritual laws. 
Because when we look with our divinity, when we look with that I am presence, that who we truly are, it gives us faith and hope in the God of our understanding. It shows us that there's so much more. When we live above, above the line, we consciously remember that the Christ presence within is the spiritual source of all being. The power for us to individually manifest, the, manifesting the universal power of God within us, that power that Jesus demonstrated when he was here on earth. And we get to do it in our own individual way. That's the beauty of it. You know, Unity Minister Eric Butterworth said, we are human in expression, but divine in creation, and limitless, limitless in potentiality. That's pretty big. Human in expression, that's our temporary part, but our divine part is forever. And we're limitless in this potential. So we can bring into our experience as much of that divinity, much, as much of the above-line experience as we choose to bring. But how does that really help us? We know it's there. We know we can access our divinity. We know we can live below, above the line. But how? Well, Buddha says it helps us to create the life we want. Buddha says, what you think, you become. What you attract, what you feel, you attract. And what you imagine, you create. It's the law of creation. The universe brings to us that which we focus upon. The Bible talks about that too. In, back in the day of the Israelites, Proverbs 23, 7. So it says he, but it means all of us. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So as each and every one of us think in our heart, that's really who we are. That's really us. Unity principle number three puts it very simply. I create my experiences by what I choose to think and what I feel and what I believe. We can create a positive, prosperous life if we choose to. It's just like finding our divinity, though. It's, it's, it's easy. And it, sometimes it just seems too simple. Seems like it should be a lot of work. But believe me, friends, you can manifest what you choose in life. Now, this works both ways, too. You can manifest some negativity if that's what you're focusing on. But if you focus on the, focus on the positive, that's what you'll get. I remember when something that I actually manifest really kind of tripped me out. Um, my youngest daughter's adopted, and so she's eight now. But when she was a baby, we weren't really prepared to have another baby. We didn't have a room set up. So we had one of those little porta cribs, those uh, pack and plays. And we put it in the front room when she was tiny, you know, about four or five months old. And on the wall, I had this big metal sun. I think the kind you see in, Me in Mexico or you see at these uh, outdoor places, it probably should have gone outside, but I liked it in my living room wall. And so I had the porta crib there, and I began to say my to myself, if you don't move that porta crib, that sun's going to fall off the wall. Next time she takes a nap, you better move that porta crib, because if you don't, it's going to fall. I said it a few times, and then one, one day I put her in the crib, and looked at the wall, and I said, yeah, I'm going to move it. I moved it within five minutes. Not even five minutes. That sun fell off the wall. That really, really blew my mind and realized that, you know, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it falling off the wall. You know what? The universe brought that to me. The universe has also brought a lot of good things to me as well. And the universe can bring good things to you. It's where we focus our attention, where we put our mind, do we focus on the blessing in each and every situation? Or do we say, oh, gosh, it's so horrible. All these things are happening, and I just don't know what to do, and it's just getting worse and worse and worse. It's up to us. We can do that. But it's not a life I'd like to live. I'd like to look not with Pollyanna eyes, but knowing that there is a blessing, really, in each and every situation, even if we don't think it's there. So how can I consciously create the life I want? I have some action steps for you here. There are four ways to become present, focused, and become a master manifester. 
really not too hard. The first one is prayer and meditation. Now, when we begin each day in prayer and meditation, that is a really positive way to start the day. It's said that prayer is talking to God, and meditation is listening for the answer. So when we spend the time in the silence, it's up to us what we ask God, right? It's up to us what we talk to our God of our understanding about. Do we want to talk about, oh, it's so horrible, or do we want to say, God, show me what is mine to do. Help me find a blessing when I can't see it. Help me to live in positivity. Help me have a happy, joyous life. We're the ones doing the talking. We just have to remember to take that time to listen. Listen for that still small voice. Listen for that response. Second step is live in the present. Live deeply in the moment. Enjoy everything like Linda's song, Linda's song today, Temporary. Live in the present right now. But you know, many times we're so trapped in with our thoughts that we can't live in the present. And you know what? Those thoughts, they don't really deal with the present, do they? They trap us because we're thinking about the past or we're thinking about the future. Very rarely are we tripping on or worrying or being depressed about what's happening right in this moment. And that's the reason that living in the moment can help us have happier thoughts, because we're not dwelling on that past or projecting into the future. So whatever we're doing, whether we're going to the beach, eating some great dessert like I'm going to do later, taking a wonderful long path or shower, or being here today, learning how to live above the line, wherever you are, live in the moment right now and enjoy the moment. Take some time when you're eating that big, that chocolate. Take that time to taste every little bit. Enjoy it. It's a wonderful way to be in the here and now and to manifest. Third way is live life from within out. out. Now, you might have heard this if you know anything about or have heard about Unity Minister, again, Eric Butterworth. He talked about living within out said the whole universe is concentrated at a point exactly where we are. That concentration of divinity is within each and every one of us. And the more that we concentrate and we live within, we go within, we pray, we meditate, we sit in the present, we ask what is ours to do, we listen, the more we live and express from what we've learned from going within. The most profound knowledge we can attain is that which we get from spirit, from the God of our understanding as we go within and listen for it. Now, for me, it's kind of hard to be quiet. I'm not a quiet person. I have to really make myself take a breath and stop and think and let go. It's easy for me to talk in the prayer part. But sometimes it's not so easy for me to listen. So it takes some training for me here, knowing that this is a universal process. This is a process of divinity, honoring myself and honoring my divinity so that I can take all those blessings within and put them out in my outside world. The last thing is look for the good in every situation. Now, that's a given. That's a given. Not always so easy. But I'm going to read to you the words of Charles Fillmore that he said in its, its timeless advice on talks and truth. I'm going to read it to you, and then we'll talk about it because he uses some expressions that we might not use today. He said, do not be afraid to pour out your love upon the so-called evil in the world. Deny the appearance of evil and affirm the omnipotence and the omnipresence of love and goodness. Take no account of the evil that appears in your life and affairs. Refuse to see it as evil. Declare that what seems evil somehow has a good side, which shall, through your persistent affirmation of its presence, be made visible. By using this creative power of your own thought, you will change that which seems evil to good, and divine love will pour its healing balm over all. So what do we mean? What did he mean when he said deny the appearance of evil? 
Well, evil is that which is not of God. Evil is lack, limitation, feelings of insecurity, of worry, not depending on the God of our understanding. Sometimes we have brought those that into our lives because we have not depended on God. And when we look at the world through the eyes of our human eyes, we see a lot of this going on. But, you know, just looking at it, just recognizing it, just recognizing that the way we look within ourselves and how we react can change. Can change looking at things negatively if we take evil as negativity, changing it to positivity, and we look for the good, I can change. The next person can change. The other person to change. And it can have that domino effect. And then as we bring into our awareness, the universe will bring to us. So as more people see good, as more people will ask for that, see the blessing in every situation then more good will become manifest, more will appear. And what is not good will, min will minimize. It's all about doing denials, denying that things control and have power over us, not denying that they exist because we see them, but denying that they consume us. And then affirming that our life is different, affirming that which we wish to be. You know, in the book that Reverend Edith is teaching from on Mondays, Mark Nepo talks about the same thing, in a way. He says, when I stop to, put, stop to put down my assumptions and conclusions, when my hands are empty and my heart starts to open, so when we're looking for the blessing, our heart starts to open, doesn't it? Then I'm returned to natural kinship with each other, no matter our path. So we return to whoever we are really meant to be, the blessing, the divinity, the love of God that we are meant to be. When we take these assumptions and throw them away, when we take these ne negative conclusions and put them aside, but when we open our heart, open our hearts to look for the blessing, even if we need that magnifying glass, going within, working on our spiritual growth, and leaning on the God of our understanding. So I invite you, friends, to move forward Set down these assumptions and say this denial with me. Together, my human experience is powerless to prevent my spiritual growth. Let me say that one more time. Say it with me, please. My human experience is powerless to prevent my spiritual growth. And what affirmation goes along with that I'll say it once and then say that with me. I am living, I'm a living, loving expression of the image and likeness of God. Say that with me, please. I am a living, loving expression of the image and likeness of God. Oh, it feels good, doesn't it, to be able to live above the line. Remember, we can live above the line, too, if we focus on the words of the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 4.18. For we don't look at the things that can be seen, but at the things that can't be seen. After all, the things you can see are here today and gone tomorrow. But the things you can't see are everlasting. They're within. and They are who we truly are when we live above the line. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful day. Namaste. Bye-bye. Now we have a fun hymn to share with you. This is Endless and Unconditional by Aaron McGoggin. One, two, three.
so happy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> next week's lesson is, actually next Sunday is Palm Sunday. And Reverend Edith will be giving a talk on dropping our mask. So I invite you to uh, join us again at 10 a.m. Actually, a little earlier for our gathering music. What is it, 9.50? Yeah. yeah, join us about 9. Yeah, when we start on time. <laughs> like this morning, it's 9.50. Well, 9 tune in at 9.50, and, we'll, and you'll get some wonderful gathering music as well. But please join us next week as Reverend Edith talks about dropping our mask. Now it's time, or time of giving and receiving. And for those of you that are watching online, you can click the donate button where you're watching. You can go online to unitysandiego.org and donate through PayPal. Or you can mail a check in, and that is right there. The address is there on the screen. So I invite you now to take your offering in your hands. Or if you don't have an offering, give us a little love. Put your hand on your heart and just give us a little offering of love. As we say the affirmation on the screen twice out loud and once in the silence. Together, I am one with God's gifts. They overflow and enrich my life. I bless the gifts and share from infinite good. And again, I am one with God's gifts. They overflow and enrich my life. I bless the gifts and share from infinite good. And then once in the silence of our hearts. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Mother, Father, God, for the opportunity to be able to tithe where we are fed, to be, for the opportunity to give and to receive. We say thank you. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Well, this is a song called The Beautiful Unseen. I don't know where Ron finds these gems, but this is a song by Copper Lily. And, oh, man, I love this song. It's a... Uh, Everything from the title, the cool, I, it's, I guess it's an oxymoron, right? The beautiful unseen. It's, it's funny, you say it and you don't really think about it, but if you think about it, it doesn't make sense and it's awesome. Um, <laughs> some of my favorite lyrics in this. Thank you. <laughs> some of my favorite lyrics in this are, uh, like the wind that passes us, we cannot see, but still we trust it's there. The beautiful unseen. Is a tree less alive Just because its leaves die Well, nobody's afraid When the colors change Doesn't mean that it isn't there. Can a seed in the ground ever be again found? Well, who's the one to know which seed will grow? See the stars hanging high, way up in the earth sky.
by a mystery can you believe what you cannot see hidden doesn't mean that it isn't there Thank you. That was good. That was great. <laughs> the beautiful unseen. There are beautiful things that are unseen. And they're everywhere around us. So I'd like to take this time to thank everyone for their gifts, tithes, and love offerings. And I don't have Gandhi on my check, but I have the Bible. Psalm 62.2, truly God is my rock and my salvation. God is my fortress. So let's just take a moment to just go into prayer. Just affirming the firm, that having a firm foundation, a fortress, a rock of the God of our understanding, knowing that there is so much more, so much more than what our human eyes can see. And so grateful and so thankful for these tithes and love offerings that allow us to spread unity throughout our community, here in San Diego, through the nation, through the world to spread this higher knowledge, this divinity that so many are looking for, to spread the knowledge that is right here within. We are so grateful. And we say thank you. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Well, unity's foundation is, pra is prayer, and we are always praying. So here, our prayer ministry at Unity San Diego, we have actual people praying with you, Monday through Friday from 12 noon to 5 p.m. The number's on the screen, and what's the really great thing about it is you can call, they hold your prayer in confidence, pray for 30 days, and they send you a beautiful affirmation, affirmation and letter. It's wonderful. And if you don't reach anybody, if it goes to the answer machine, just leave a message because they will confidentially retrieve that message, answer it, give you a call back, and pray with you. Now, we have a little bit of difference here with silent unity. We just found out the other day that their hours have changed. So they are no longer during COVID 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year. Silent unity is available here in Pacific time from 3 a.m. to 11 p.m. Every single day of the, word, of the year, but it's a little bit of a difference. It's just a little bit less than, than full time. And their phone number has changed too. So if you'll notice that the phone number on the screen is an 816 number, please call Silent Unity if you feel the need for more prayer or you want to pray and speak with somebody outside of the hours we have here. You will speak to somebody again there. You'll also they'll hold your prayer in confidence, pray with you for 30 days. And that's really a wonderful, wonderful thing to have so much prayer support because we know prayer works. We also have prayer chaplains. Our prayer chaplains are continuously holding each and every one of us in prayer. Our words are prayers. Our thoughts are prayers. Prayer works. Let's take a moment just to bless our prayer box here. This is the box that were you here, you would be putting your prayers into. It represents the prayers that you've spoken, prayers that you've called about, emailed about, maybe the prayers you haven't even thought of yet. Let's just take a moment to just bless this box. Knowing that divine order is truly always, always in charge, looking for the best and the highest good for everyone. And as our prayers are answered, we know that there is always a bigger picture. There is always positivity because we know that God is love. God is positivity. God is oneness. And in oneness, and in prayer, 
And in love, our prayers are answered. We say thank you. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Now please join me in the music team singing More Than Enough by Daniel Namod. <laughs> The, together, please. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is truly well as we see the blessing in each and every person and situation in our lives. Namaste. Have a great week. Bye-bye.